Welcome to The Deciding Point, our Cracked Rackets weekly breakdown of the biggest storylines happening throughout the tennis world. On this week's show, we are talking 2021 Wimbledon Gentlemen's Singles results. Of course, we have to talk about Novak Djokovic winning Grand Slam number 20, probably solidifying his case as the greatest men's tennis player of the Open era. Of course, we have to talk about some of the other trends that emerged as well outside of Novak Djokovic. Djokovic, you see the post big three hierarchy starting to take form. Where does everyone rest in that hierarchy? That's something we'll discuss. I also want to talk about two players I'm buying all of the stock in. FAA, Hubie Hercots, winners of this Wimbledon, winners moving forward as well. I'll explain why. All of that discussed on today's show. With that in mind, Westoff, roll those credits. Let's get after it. We here at Cracked Rackets try to stay as neutral as possible in our perspectives towards individual players competing in the professional game. Of course, we have players we are fond of, players who have been so kind to us here at CR, but so as to observe the game objectively, we try to stay away from keeping favorites. Of course, we'll root for our picks to have success, but more than anything else, we are hoping the sport succeeds. All of that is to say, I say this from a purely objective standpoint standpoint. If you are selling your stock in Felix Ogier Aliasim, if you do not believe he has the upside of a future Grand Slam champion, I will buy it from you at that price of a single Grand Slam champion. Because to be honest, if I'm setting the over under, I think it's at one and a half. I think Felix Ogier Aliasim has the sort of talent and has displayed all before the age of 2021 that he's got the goods, that he is going to be a future champion on the ATP Tour. I've made the case repeatedly on our Cracked Rackets podcast, but it's worth mentioning once again, he's a former world junior number one, a former slam champion, a guy on whom expectations has been on his shoulders since the early onset of his career. You look early on for Felix, you know, I've mentioned this fact before, Richard Gasquet, Del Potro, Nadal, Djokovic, Felix Ogier Aliassime, and now Carlos Alcaraz. Those are the six guys who have set every record on the ATP Challenger Tour based on age. Youngest player to win a match. Youngest player to win a Challenger title. Youngest player to win multiple Challenger titles. That's the category FAA routinely found himself with. And he was the youngest to win an ATP level match since Rafa Nadal. He was, you know, the youngest to make a final since Nadal and Djokovic. And just year after year, time after time, he set these records. And I understand FAA is 0-8 in ATP finals. But the glass half full perspective would be he's made eight ATP finals before the age of 21, and he's done it on all three surfaces. You look for him at the slams. He's now made fourth rounds on uh, two of the three surfaces, but at three of the four slams. He's done it in Australia. He's done it at the U.S. Open. He's done it at Wimbledon. He's now made his first quarter final at a slam at this 2021 Wimbledon. Knocks off a top 10 seed, one of his nemesises, a guy, nemeses, I suppose, a guy he was 0-3 against in Alex. Zverev uh, in a five-set match where he blew a two-sets-to-love deficit and just, you know, again, FAA can do so many things so well and, you know, is it the glaring physics? You watch an Alex Zverev play and the Daniil Medvedev and their wingspan just jumps off the page and their ability to do a little bit of everything you can tell within five minutes of watching it. It's not quite that fluid as them and yet he's a top-tier athlete just like them. When you watch FAA, does he lack in power? No. Does he lack in a quick first step? No. Does he lack in brutally efficient footwork? No. Does he lack in having a plan B, C, and D right now? Yes, but is that power tennis good enough to be plan A? Yes. Does it sound like a cannon is taking off every time he hits a forehand with his feet set? Yes. Does it remind you that thunderousness? It reminds you of like a Shaq in 2000, the way he just dunked over people, took down hoops and just his physicality, his athleticism, the the heavy, you know, the strength and the power with which he did things was different than everyone else. That's the same thing when FAA plays his tennis. The weight of that serve, that forehand, the sound coming off of the racket, it's just different than everyone else and Look, for FAA, I'll say it again, the way he rips a backhand to me might be the most impressive thing. His ability to hit through a court, cross court off of that wing, it is not something that a lot of people as a trait can share. And so, again, 
I think the grass courts fit him so perfectly, and you look for him. He made a final uh, on the grass courts before losing to Marin Cilic. He loses in three sets to Ugo Umber at the 500 in Hala, and then, you know, makes the quarterfinals before he's knocked out by the eventual finalist in Matteo Berrettini in four sets, a close four set match. All of these benchmarks he's hit, and I know he still, you know, you look for him 34 and 24 over his last 52 weeks. It's a 59% win percentage. That's pretty constant to what we've seen from him in 2018, 19, and 20. And, you know, he's been a top 30 player now for about two and a half seasons. That's, again, to solidify yourself in that sort of ranking before the age of 21, that speaks to how special he is. And you look for him now in his career against top 10 players, Felix Ogier, Ali Asim. Currently, you look for him overall 5 and 16. And, you know, for him in particular, that second serve, 48.2% win percentage, that struggles compared to his career average of 51% on that serve. And so, again, for a 20-year-old, though, to struggle at the second serve percentage when that's the gaping hole and, you know, the break percentage, the harder the serve, the more difficult, I suppose, it gets for him. But currently, he's 17th in hold percentage amongst top 50 players. And you watch him play, the the more solid he gets with the plus one ball, the better his shot selection becomes. That number has the potential and his serve has the potential to be a top five serve. I think watching Matteo Berrettini play, that's a really nice facsimile of what uh, FAA could become. I think he is Matteo Berrettini. Bertini, but then a more dynamic backhand, a little bit less consistent right now, but I think has the power and the ability to become that consistent five years from now when he's 25. I am such a fan of FAA's work. I will, again, if you are selling the stock, if you don't think Grand Slam champion, you think some of these other next geners have passed him, that's fine. I'll take it. I think this was a huge victory for him in Wimbledon. I think this summer hard court stretch is set up really well for him to have another breakthrough. Keep your eye on Felix Ogier-Aliassime down the stretch in 2021.